This is the equation of exchange. It is mv equals pq. In other words, m times v equals p times q. In this equation, m stands for money supply. V stands for velocity of money. P stands for price level. And Q stands for quantity of trades. Um, but it's better to think of it as just standing for real GDP. It's easier to do that even though it's to, it starts with Q. So you might think of it as quantity of output. The money supply, um, just like what we graph on the money market, the supply of money. And usually it's uh, in reference to the M2 definition of the money supply. When we talk about the velocity of money, it's a funny phrase, but what it is referring to is the average number of times a dollar is spent on final goods and services in a year. And so if you were to, it's a long definition, but the basic idea is that if you were to track the life of a dollar bill and follow it for a year um, and watch it change hands because dollars buy things, so like this dollar buys this cup of coffee or something like that, and then the person who earns the dollar turns around and spends it somewhere, and then that person who earns that dollar turns around and spends it and then it gets spent again and again and if you were to count how many times that dollar changed hands in a year in order to buy final goods and services that's the velocity of money so let's say in one year this dollar changed hands five times and every dollar on average in your society changed dollars five times in a year, then the velocity of money would be five. The price level you already uh, know about, that's what we've been graphing on the y-axis of the ADAS graph. and uh, It's a measure of the high or low of prices in society. So like the prices on goods and services, what, how high or low they are. And then, like I said, think of quantity of trades as being real GDP, which is the output of your country. So if you look at this PQ part, if you take the prices of things times how many things you made, this formula should look somewhat familiar to you because if you're taking the real GDP and putting on it the prices, you're going to end up with the nominal GDP. So um, this equation can all be set so that P times Q is equal to nominal GDP, therefore M times V is equal to nominal GDP, which makes sense because if you were to take how many dollars there are in society times the velocity of money, which is how many times each of those dollars is going to get spent in the year, and then you would have nominal GDP. So there's nothing controversial about this equation. It's just an equation. It's true. And it's two ways to get to nominal GDP. However, what becomes controversial is that there are some economists, there are some economists who are going to hold that the velocity of money is constant, meaning that um, no matter how much money the Fed puts into the economy or takes out of the economy, um, the number of times that the dollar is spent in a year doesn't change. It's not like people are going to turn around and spend money any faster just because there's um, more money in the economy. So some economists hold that it's constant. And because when we look at um, the quantity of trades, the real GDP growth, um, on the business cycle, if you remember that there's this trend line, even though the cycle is going recession, expansion, recession, expansion, there's a trend line, this dotted line, going through that is showing a long-term trend. And for first world industrialized countries, that growth is about 2%. It's a 
like uphill grade on that trend line. So it means about 2% annual growth in the long run for uh, most countries. And therefore, this Q, if we think of it then as being pretty much 2%, when the Fed comes in and increases the money supply, trying to be um, all slick with their monetary policy, and increases the money supply by greater than 2%, if the velocity of money is constant and Q is basically growing at just 2% a year, then in this equation, in order for it to be true, the only outlet for it to equal each other is going to be for an increase in prices. And so economists will hold that the Fed coming in with their monetary policy is only going to lead to higher prices. And so they say, why do it? Just don't get involved. Stay out of the economy. So that's like um, Ron Paul and uh, his, uh, he's a Republican candidate. He's calling for the end of the Federal Reserve. He's one of those that is siding with the economists saying that monetary policy um, is ineffective and should uh, be stopped.